So much to gain, so much to lose. Yeah, there is, and it's the number one spot. And you know how much is treasured. That was better from De Silva. Amazing atmosphere behind us, Vinny. Superb. Really is. Absolutely. Smash my tie. Packed this stadium to the He's rafters. He's got us out the ropes. McGowan looks a menacing figure, doesn't he? All right, so we're here, Fight Talk, episode number three. Um, we're joined with the legend, Paolo De Silva, another former opponent of mine. Paolo, welcome and uh, thanks for coming on, mate. No, man, thanks for the invite. No worries, no worries. Um, yeah, so jumping straight in. Um, so we had a, our fight, oh, it was probably about six years ago now, I think. It was six, about six years? Yeah, six years. Uh, it was in two, 2014, I think. Yeah, so um, you were like the... It was mad. It was the UK number one sport at bantamweight, so 53 and a half kilo. And yeah. it was mad for me to kind of get the opportunity to fight you because I'd watch you when I first started, when I was, I think, about 11. And yeah, you, were, yeah. you were fighting people and, and knocking people out and you, you were known as this big, big puncher. Um, so I kind of went through the ranks in, in that division and, and finally got the chance to be number two and get the chance to fight you. And um, it was obviously, it lived up. It was a really good fight. Um, so, yeah, go, it, was, it was mad because, like I said, I, I watched you since I was a kid. And so before the fight, I knew how powerful you were. That was your thing, your, your yeah. big punches. Um, so, yeah, like, tr like before the fight, mentally, I was, I was, you know, that 18, I was 18. And I think you have that fearlessness anyway. You, you're not, you don't care when you're young. You, yeah, I remember. I remember them days, mate. <laughs> 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 like, I just, I, I knew how powerful you were and stuff. And, I, I knew, and I'd watch loads of you fights. And, it's weird because I remember actually watching you fight when I was young and maybe, maybe when I was about 14 and I thought, because I knew I was always going to be quite small as well, I, yeah. I was looking at the fighters that, oh, okay, I think maybe I could fight him in the future like when I'm better and when I come up the ranks. And I always remember watching you all the time on P4 TV actually and um, I thought, maybe I could fight Paolo one day. Like as in size-wise, it, it might be a fight that could actually come about. And um, yeah. so maybe I was, I had my eye on you for a while to be fair and, um, and I was, I was really happy to get the fight, and um, before the fight, training wise, like Lee, me and Liam knew knew your your strengths, and um, we we trained so hard for it and worked on a good plan, a game plan, and um, like my 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 kind of mentality going into the fight, and my game plan was obviously to keep keep away from that punch, and um, yeah, yeah, definitely, I... use use my range a bit and and kind of trying to like score basically score really, um, yeah. But yeah, like I was fearless, but I was always really weary about your your um power and stuff. But going into fight, how how was you feeling going into fight? Because for you, you were you were coming towards the. It, I was kind of, this is my big my big opportunity. And at this point, yeah. it was like you'd already been about for years, and and you'd already made a good name for yourself. So, what was your mentality, and how was it different to mine? Because mine was a, it was a massive opportunity for me. So how how did you feel going into the fight? Mine was just totally different, really. I remember being in your shoes, you know what I mean? Being 18, 20, 21 and fighting, obviously, the older lads and getting the opportunities myself, really. Um, so for me, like, one, I'm a believer, like, everyone should have opportunity to, you know, to fight the number ones and stuff, because obviously I was given them. Uh, my mentality was different, really. By then, I was coming towards the end, obviously not taking away from you, because you beat me fair and square, and obviously your game plan was really good. I was just getting, I was just a bit tired of it by then, really. If you know what I mean, like it was hard sometimes for me to motivate myself as much. And then I retired, you know, next year in, um, I think in November. I think I then had the two losses after that, and then I had two wins. Whatever, but anyway, yeah. Um, I think it was just there. And obviously, um, I don't even remember watching you much. I think I watched you fight once, and for me, really, it was just another fight. You know what I mean? It was just cracking on and. I remember being in changing rooms and trying to fire myself up and I wasn't quite, I did not, you know, by then I think I was losing that killer thing a little bit, but it was great. I remember, you know, I remember the fight. I remember trying to pin you down and you kept kicking and moving away and made it difficult. By the time I, I got it, it was really like last round and, you know, and it was a bit too late, really. It was great, you know. I mean, it's it's you know, it's amazing. You've done it, you know. You fought good you fought, for your age at the time. You fought, you fought amazing. You fought with um, you know, you showed your experience beyond your beyond your years, really. If I'm honest, so yeah, it was good, man. It was, you know, I loved it. I ain't got no, I ain't got no, no thing. It was a good fight. People enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Some people who don't really understand the scoring as well. Probably they thought I won the fight because I was coming forwards and fight the thing. But you know, through Muay Thai scoring, I, 
you know, I, I lost on points. That's what it is. Yeah, look, but going going back to what you were saying before the fight, uh, before the, in the change rooms, I I remember not not necessarily the change rooms, but I think it was the the day or the, or the night before the fight. I was shitting myself so badly. Like, yeah. I, this is a guy that I'd watch knock so many people out, and um, I was proper shitting myself. And and I, every time someone said, "Oh, you know," I was like eighteen. Now nah, I don't I don't care. <laughs> like now, nah, fine. But I I was really nervous going into the fight. Um. Because it was like a big, big step up for me. I'd fought, like I said, I'd, I'd fought up to the ranks to get to towards that number one spot. But yeah. I'd, ne I'd never come across someone that was had such a high KO ratio like yourself. And um, and I'd never come across someone that I'd watched fight so much. So, um, yeah, I was shitting myself a lot. And I actually remember in the change rooms and uh, before going out to the fight, um, I think you were like, I went in first. I think I entered the ring first. Yeah, you went in first. I was waiting on the side. Yeah, and and I saw you, I saw you, um, kind of waiting behind me. You you just come out, and I was about to go in, and I just thought, shit, this is mad. And and the atmosphere was great, like it was actually a brilliant atmosphere in there. It yeah, it was really out. good. The show was really good. I remember yeah. that. I remember talking to your dad after and stuff like that as well. So no, it was good, man. So so yeah, so going going into round one, I mean, I think I think I was doing well, and and I, like I said, I was weary, obviously, of your big punches. Um. But you actually caught me, and it's probably a shot that people wouldn't even know that hurt me as much. So there was a few times in the fight where you rocked my head on back, but yeah. then them ones where your head kind of goes, it it doesn't necessarily rock your whole kind of to your boot to your kind of boots. Yeah. It, it almost your neck almost takes the thing off. Yeah. Yeah, but there was one in round one, and it was probably the worst punch you caught me with. It was um, you caught my teeth and you sweep my leg, but at the same time you left hook. Yeah, punch. And it was yeah. real sharp. Yeah. It was really sharp on my chin and. And straight, straight away, I was like, okay, this is going to be like, this is, I was ready to, I was willing to, I knew that at some points in the fight, I'm, I'm going to have to dig deep and I'm going to be yeah. hurt at some point. Doesn't he? Paolo will get his hands working though, do not doubt that for a second. Smash Muay Thai, World Series. And they are putting Good together. Good shot by De yeah. Silva. That got, that got his... Um, but that was the first straight away and, and, and you chopped my leg from, I think, from round one um and I, I just tried sticking to the plan tee pin and kind of trying to annoy you and try not let you set set your feet to to land these big shots yeah, bang, yeah. and then that kind of went on for like round one and two was similar and then i remember coming back to the corner and and um liam was like why the fuck ain't you blocking we, we've been like the the low kicks he's yeah. like we've been training so much we bought so many like we, we had loads of good sparring partners and stuff he's like what were you doing? Like this is the plan. You knew, we knew that. Like he's got good punches. He's got good low kick. Why? Why aren't you? Um. Why aren't you blocking? I was like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Like it's not hurting me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and um, he was like, yeah, but you have got to start blocking. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like me being eighteen year old, not not giving a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then round three, it really stepped up. Then and then um, it become it, it started becoming a bit of a war. Even though I kind of kept the technical um aspect to it, round three, that like shots start. You started landing some big shots and um. It was really back and forth. Like I was scoring well with the body kicks, but you were landing some big punches and big low kicks. And um, then yeah, the low kicks is the the one the, that was that started to kill me. Like so, round three, I remember my leg started going badly, and it, and it actually swelled up my left my my front leg. And um, I, I thought shit, I don't know how I'm gonna carry on in for five rounds with with this leg because I could barely walk in round three. Yeah. And, and Slowly up in his product, Daniel McGowan though, stepping up the gears, isn't he? But Hard leg it, kick. You said it before, Vinny. He needs to look after that lead leg, doesn't basics. he? Basics. Basics. He knows the basics, this kid. But he is scoring. He's starting to hurt that. That leg is swollen. Yep. Most no, definitely. It's a concern, isn't it? It is. Again, the leg kick. He's not checking it. It's blocked. It's really hurt McGowan's leg. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, was, was that kind of your game plan? Because you, you'd let me body kick but you'd take the body kick to throw that low kick when I'm kind of standing. So was that kind of a, a plan that you had going into the fight? <laughs> to be honest, man, it, it, it's really my fighting style really done. Like, I'm not, I'm not your typical, like, Thai boxer. You know, I'm in mean, a good kicker and the good stuff. I'm, you know, I'm a bang. Everyone knows me. You're like, I, I come heavy with big guns and I low kick a lot. I'm more like a K1 type fighter that fights... Thai boxing, I haven't got the physical attributes to be a good body kicker. Don't get me wrong, on the pads, I bang the pads good and stuff, but I'm not flexible. I'm quite a stiff fighter. And um, 
unfortunately, like the power thing becomes a curse, really, because you rely on it to win the fights to bang people out. Yeah. Is if you watch most of my fights, I think probably in seventy five fights, I probably I win like ten fights on points. If so, maybe a little bit more than that. But if I didn't stop them or really thing, I tend to lose on points because I'm not really a scorer. And really, from the fight, I knew I ain't gonna out kick a eighteen year old lad. Really, I just have to try muller you. Really, you know what I mean? Bully you, try to get you in into a brawl, try to bang you, try to cane your legs. You know, my, you know, try to bring you into my style of fighting, if that makes sense. Because I ain't gonna be, you know, I, I, I ain't gonna have a chance kick for kick, if you know what I'm trying to say. That kind of thigh style. Yeah. One ain't really me, and two, I knew I wouldn't really have a chance in in that, you know, in that department. Really, yeah. I'd have to try yeah. to go for like, you know, for the big punches, big low kicks, cane the leg. You know, I mean, try basically try to stop you. That's yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Really, that's that's no. what it comes down to. So yeah, so like go going into fight, like I'd never I never ever expected to to stop you. Like in my head I always knew that I had more chance of winning on points. And, yeah. And um I knew that a hundred percent you knew that you'd probably have to knock me out or not or really hurt me or knock me down in the fight to kind of to get the win as well. Um I I was actually going back I remember I knew a hundred percent from your style anyway, from watching you that you were gonna come for a knockout, but I remember actually seeing John uh, right on Facebook, something. What did it? It was something like he's going to be like taking Harry Bows of the kid or something like that. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh shit, man, he's coming to take my head off. But um, but like like I said, I knew I knew it was going to. I knew that was kind of coming. I was expecting that anyway. Um, and then round four, like it it was mad because it started off. It was just getting fast. The pace was getting faster, faster, and it was getting harder and harder each round. Um, but like it was just, like I said, it was back and forth, back and forth. And then round four, I knew I was ahead. But I, again, I. You then started targeting my um, back leg as well. Yeah, because I could, I could. Uh, you started to block off your front leg a little bit, so I tried to change it to the back. So yeah. then you tend to block off the back, and then I could smash the front one again. He was trying to change it a bit. If I... and you, you were hitting every part of my leg. Like when you were hitting my left leg, it was like the inside, the outside. The then it would go into the back of my leg. Then you was going back, and um, I, I still like to this day. I, I it's one of the worst I've ever felt after a fight. I mean, well, it is a hundred percent. It's I've never felt so beat up after a fight. Even yeah. even though I won, I won the fight. Is I come out of it and I was in agony. And and it's just, it's actually I always tell my mates this. Well, my mates always bring this up when I'm with them because I I I said to my mates if if I win this fight, I don't care what my mum and dad say. We're having a house party at my house. This is like my big achievement. Everyone yeah. come back to mine and we'll we'll have a party. And I got out of the ring and as soon as round five the bell went I just if you remember I collapsed to my knees and yeah, yeah I remember that I mean I, I don't usually obviously people do it to like pay respect to the opponent yeah, but yeah, yeah. Not, I wasn't even doing that at that point I actually just couldn't fucking stand on my feet it was so painful he's hurt he never got his elbows off how I thought he would Paolo guarded no. very well didn't he great fight great fight finish Sherman is that fight of the year in the UK yeah, 100%. 2014 100% Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, both you just battered both my legs and then my mate I got out of the ring and I was like just I, I, if I didn't win the fight I think I would have just been crying my eyes out because the pain was so bad. <laughs> it was horrible. Um and I remember Liam Liam actually having to so Liam and his wife had to carry me and put me into the car and he drove me back to my um to my house. Yeah. And I got I got back to the house and they they had to carry me out of the car and they were lifting me and they lifted me, lifted me to my doorstep and the pain was so bad I've never I've never had this before it, like I started going dizzy and I felt sick from the pain of my leg yeah and and then um I managed to get in and all my mates are waiting for me ah oh, yes it's ready for a session like, ready <laughs> to on it and I went straight to the ice bath and um I was trying to crawl up the stairs and I'm like gagging like nearly getting sick from just the pure pain of it. And um, I, and it, but what was what was shocking, what, or what was more shocking to my mates is that I'd won the fight, but they saw you after the fight, and you you were like going going around like nothing, like you, it, you didn't really have a mark on you, you didn't you weren't beat up at all, and um, that's what was kind of interesting. Like after the fight, were you, were you hurt at all, like in that from from the fight? 
No, I, I was never that old. It was just different. I suppose you're fighting like, you know, you're 18 and you're fighting a 34-year-old man who's had like, I don't know, probably by then around 60 fights. You know what I mean? Like, I think your body and your bones, they're more used to it. Because I remember being you and someone being me, if that makes sense. I was absolutely fine. I did, you know, I'm not taking it away from you. I didn't have... I didn't have a mark on me. I was next day I was back to the gym holding pads, working like, you know, like always. I was um I was absolutely fine. I just um I think I was a bit more like not gutted, you know what I mean? I was a bit disappointed I couldn't really pin you and then you know, I just sort of lost that number one spot. I think that I think that at the time hurt me more than anything, because I don't think I had any, you know, physical kind of like kind of damage really. I'm quite to be honest that I think it's only probably been like two fights in my whole career that I've been hurt. I'm pretty like little bulletproof, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, even like even like you guys are much bigger than me. Even like the number one spot, like at fifty three and a half. I, I I used to walk around that way. I used to have to eat up to stay at fifty three, fifty three and a half. Even on my last year fighting, I fought at fifty one, fifty two, fifty three and a half, and fifty five. I don't even weigh 55 kilos now, mate, and I'm 40 years old. Wow. That's <laughs> you know, it just... Um, but yeah, no, man, I, I was fine. I was... Um, yeah, I didn't have a mark on me. I knew you were sore because I went to see you in the changing rooms and I spoke to your old man and that uh, I could tell your legs were pretty battered, but... Yeah, but just... I'm glad you were all right because I was fucked for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so... you, you took enough for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was fucked. Like, I, I, still, I, I, and I always remember like learning from that fight because I was still quite inexperienced really and I was young but the one thing I learned is that if I could take that kind of punishment and, and dig deep and, and carry on then maybe I could get that is when I realised I could definitely think I could get far in the sport because yeah. I, I'm not I'm not going to say like all fighters like, I, nobody would be able to take that but I think a lot of people would would have quit because I was in so much I was in bad it's, not, it's not like a lot, lot of people would quit a lot of people quit that's why I stopped so many with the same thing you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful to any of the opponents I've stopped, but many, many people quitted, taking less punishment than that. If you, yeah. if you know what I mean, and that's, and that's a fact. Yeah. You know, it, 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 like I mean, I can, and in a way, I can understand. Like the fighter in me, I can't understand because I, I don't think I'd ever want to quit. But I can understand because the pain that I was in, and and when you got to weigh up the options of, especially if I was a little bit older, maybe, or if people are a little bit older, they've got families and they've got, they've got yeah, people. yeah, yeah. That, um, that, that that comes into count as you get older. That's that, that's when it's time when you start thinking like that. Then it's time to yeah. Well, well, I couldn't like I said I could barely walk for two weeks. So I wasn't I wasn't working really after the fight for about a week at least. And um, I mean if that was now, I, I'd be I'd be pretty fucked. But so yeah. I, I can I can sort kind of understand in ways because we're not getting paid a lot of money for this. So so the punishment was a lot, and so I can understand, but. There's just something in, like, you know, as a fighter, there's something in you that just won't allow that, you, you just can't allow it to happen. And, and I think that's, that's what I, I kind of have and, and kind of what got me through the fight somehow. I, I still, it still shocks me. I really shocked myself how I did stay on my feet, though, because I genuinely, I couldn't actually walk. I don't know how I even managed to keep up. Yeah. But it, was a, it was an amazing experience. And, and it was amazing that you gave me the opportunity. And we, we've spoke about this before. We actually spoke about this on the message, message uh, yeah. Instagram message. And a lot of people now would be UK number one. You, you, how, how long did you hold the UK number one spot? I had it for a long time, man. I can't, do, I can't give you the exact amount of years, but it was a, I don't know, man, a long time. Let's just say, I don't know, ten years. Let's yeah. say eight years or whatever. You know, it's a long time. I, yeah, I, so I can't give you that time. Because uh, I can always remember, like growing up, that you were always number one, even when I was like probably had a couple of junior fights, and yeah. you were still number one. So yeah, it was a, it was a long time. Um, and for someone like you who was 34 to give a young 18 year old uh, an, an opportunity to, to fight for that spot a lot of people don't do that anymore and you, you know as probably being a promoter that it's hard to find fighters like that now that actually give that opportunity yeah 100% um, and, and I think what I learned from, from you from giving me that opportunity was if someone genuinely deserves and has fought their way up to the spot and and I get offered the right deal, then I can't say no to uh, to a fight. So one of the one of the examples would be when I fought Ryan Shee, and I I felt like I actually spoke to Ryan about this. I said my resume, like I've been a lot more experienced. I've 
beaten probably better fighters and stuff at the time. But he mm. was he was winning every fight, and he I could never deny him the chance to come and fight me for the world title because yeah. if I if I didn't if I denied him that that opportunity, then I would have just been a hypocrite because I would have been so upset if you didn't give me that opportunity and give me my chance. Yeah. So that's another thing I really learned from the fight, and um. Yeah, and I, I'm always um, very grateful that you gave me that opportunity. So, um, but yeah, it, it was a mad fight and, and it, was, it was really surreal actually for me being in the ring, ring with you because like I said, I'd, I'd looked up to you for years and I always would love, I was always really like, I'd be, I would have been buzzing to always fight you and I always remember thinking in my head. So it was crazy at some points in the fight, I was thinking, fuck no, I'm actually fighting Paolo de Silva. Like, what the, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, it's cool, like, but you know, back to that opportunity thing and stuff like that. For me, I'm I'm a great believer, really. If you're number one, you need to defend that number two spot. That, that you know, that defend your number one spot against the number two or number three. Yeah. At at, at any time, really. If you know what I mean, you, you need to prove that you are number one. It's yeah. like I get I get it loads like now when you're trying to get someone to to defend the spot. Oh, they ain't worthy. They ain't this. Well, they are worthy. They are number two. They're number two for some reason. So, yeah. if you're not sure you're gonna beat them, you just fight them. Yeah, and that's it. It's uh, I, and then sometimes, you know, as sometimes there's a million excuses. It's because people are scared of losing that spot. Yeah, I understand that, but come on, man, just go and do it, and just and just prove you deserve. You know, you deserve that spot. And if you lose, you lose. You might fight tomorrow and win again. It doesn't. You know, the sport is like that. You know, you know, it's like in Thailand, everyone fights everyone about ten times, and it could be five apiece. You know what yeah. I mean? You, just, you need to give people them chance, you know what I mean? And give these young fighters the opportunity to shine as well. Your vibe, yours. You know what I mean? If you if you really think you're gonna win, just go and do it, man. That's yeah. for me, really, as soon as the fight got offered, it wasn't even like me and John not even like football, just like, yeah, that's it, let's just do it. It's like it's like any other fight. Yeah. Just do it and just and just crack on. Just give give everyone a chance. That's that's the way I've always been. I never denied the fight. I always said yes to a fight. Yeah. Sometimes I should have said no to some because the weight was too much or whatever. But I'm a fighter, man. I I fight anyone. That's it. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's true. I think I think that is a big thing. Now, the the only the only way I probably now wouldn't um, give someone not give someone the opportunity. It basically, the deal would. I've I've said this in a few of my things that I've done, like the fight tours. If if I was getting paid the the money I feel like I deserve to get paid, then I'll fight whoever. You like? Yeah, yeah. And like, that's and that's how it should be. Yeah, and that's how we should. Be. And people should get paid for it as well. I'm not saying like for people to do it for free. That's not what I'm saying, really. If you're number one, you deserve your number one money for being number one. Let's yeah. really be realistic. You have to, you know, you have to get, you know, the money as well. If you know what I mean. But some people, regardless of the money, they still say no because they don't really want to lose it. So no, that's it. Yeah, that, it's all about the um. You, if you're confident enough, like you said, if you're confident, you'll do it, and and that's how it should be. Um, I got I got a few questions in um, from from some people as well, so we'll, we'll go through a few of the questions. Um, some of them we've actually already answered to be honest, like just by chatting. Yeah. Um, so I've actually loads of them have actually been answered. But let me just go to, through and say. Uh, so mental. Oh, uh, the mentality. So what was your or both? They've asked what was our mentalities with each other after the fight. So. I mean, I, I was if I I always respected you massively anyway, and um, that, that didn't change after the fight at all. Um, you're I, I've always, I've saw you a lot since the fight, and we've always got on really well. And yeah, I yeah, like me, me, I, like me, I'm strictly prof professional, man. I'm I ain't got you know win or lose for me is exactly the same. You know what I mean? It's it's again, it's two people in there trying their best. Unfortunately, one has to win, one has to lose. So for me, it was exactly the same. I didn't have no bad feelings towards you I just lost the fight unfortunately I didn't get the win but bad feelings and that I didn't have anything and no. I think it's in 75 fights I think it's only been one person I I disliked and probably I'm still going to dislike him when I'm fucking under the years old you know what I mean <laughs> that, that's just the person really yeah. but no man I didn't have no problem you know what I mean I think I actually respected the achievement at such a young age if I'm honest you know what I mean it reminded me a bit of my of myself when I was young, you know what I mean? It was like, do or die, fuck it, I'm not giving up, I'm not just going to do it, you know, so yeah. it's great. It's good. No, wicked. Wicked. Um, so, the, I've, I've already mentioned that one. Oh, so, how did, how did I feel fighting someone with such a big reputation and someone with such a high KO ratio? So, um, I, like I said, I, I was, 
really nervous the night before the fight and um but in the build-up I was 1000% confident like I always have been in yeah. my ability and, and I always um, that's how you should be really you need to you know you need to believe in yourself yeah otherwise I would have otherwise I would definitely would have made it through the five rounds but I, I was always really confident I had such a good team around me um with Liam and Park. Oh, Liam, listen Liam like I probably I mentioned that before Liam, Liam was a great trainer and probably like he brought the best in you really no no the respect to any other trainers you've had or any other team or any other thing I don't I don't think you've been you know the same fight and probably the same thing as you were when you were then because he was like yeah, that, yeah that's my personal view I'm not dissing anyone or anything like that it just it's my it's my view on it you know what I mean I think I think with that is I think if if Liam was still about I think I would I think I'd be better. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think I'd def because we just had a bond. It was just so... It yeah, was, that's it. You know, you just find... Sometimes you gel with people, don't you? You've got that bond and you know you both work and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I was always 100% confident. If he told me that I could win it, there's no way... Like, there's That's 100%. He wouldn't put me into a fight if he thought I was going to get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's so true. And, and I, trusted, I trusted him, one fa again, 1,000% and Pan. I, I had a really good team with him and Pan. Like the mix of them two together was like a, was perfect for me. And it's still, like that's another subject. But it's still gut like it's gutting for me still to like think about it. That it, it should still be like that. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, like I think if Liam was still about, I think yeah, things would be a lot different. Still, like my life would be a completely different now. I think. But um, yeah, yeah, I think like like I said, I had I had trust in Liam, and and he told he he actually told me before the before the fight had even been. Um, we we wanted to fight the number one spot about a year or so before before we actually kind of asked for it. I think he was like, oh, "This is the fight we're we're aiming for." It. He was like, "You can do it now. I know you can. Um, we just got to keep winning and and keep proving." And yeah. so, so for about a year or so before the fight, he kind of installed that in me that this is this is my work, what I'm supposed to be doing, and this I'm ready for it. So yeah, he he was a big part in um kind of in in that role of of getting the win for the fight as well and. So yeah, um, what was the hardest part of the fight for you both? I'll, I'll let you go first for this one. Uh, for me during the fight, probably was just getting my timing and my distance. You were moving too much and it was hard. You, you're doing good stuff like kicking as I was trying to come in and keeping the distance. Yeah, probably the others, it was like, one, just supposed to fire myself a little bit to, 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 to get to it. And you know your game plan was good, probably just trying to pin you down. By the time like I think last round, I think probably last 10, 20 seconds, I think to the end of the bell went on the fifth round. I landed some big shots. You know you you're probably ready to go, but by then it was too late. The, you know the fight was over. Probably fired another round. It could have been maybe slightly different, but yeah, you were just trying to. For me, it was just I mean trying to get you really. Your timing was good. You were moving well. I couldn't really. I couldn't quite get you if you know what I mean even when I got you wasn't really getting you like you were moving if you know what I mean so yeah. that's as much as I remember from it I think I watched it once or twice from there but yeah it was just I think when it was one was firing myself up a little bit um, yeah and two was the timing you had good timing but the kicks kept moving it was quite good now and then you throw like sneaky elbow to try to put me off of <laughs> punching I think it was like it, I, I think know, that's it. Round round four, I think that was. You you caught me with a few big punches. Yeah. And I managed to. I was covered up for ages, and and I think all my fans are like, oh shit, like hand, heads in there, like or hands in the head kind of thing. And yeah. yeah. And then, um, I managed to pull the elbow out, and then that kind of stopped the stopped me getting. Yeah, the attack it put me off a little bit because I'm like, whoa, fucking hell, you know what I mean? And... Look out for the Silva. He needs to go for Bro now. He's tipper tapping with his shots. He's hurt. He's hurt, McGowan. Yeah. Vicious that was hand. a good shot from Silva. Again, again, Silva comes forward. He's hurt McGowan. McGowan's really hurt now. Oh, but the and heart back of McGowan again. being tested. And he's coming through. Billy Shawman, we are treated to a war here. Yeah, you know, he was a bit, yeah, he was a bit like that. But yeah, no. Yeah, yeah that was for me, really. So, I, I think um, the hardest part, again, I've, I've already said it was the the power, the power, and the low kicks was the, the big thing. Like you caught me some big punches, but the the low kicks are what really stick out in my mind. What really, yeah. hurt. Um, but I think we kind of touched on it earlier as well. Is my, I think my body being being a little bit younger, 
and less less fights and stuff. You, like I said, you walked out of the fight unscathed, and and even though you didn't get the decision, I like you you were like fresh. You, you went to work the next day, you were fine. Whereas I I was yeah. the complete opposite, but I I'd got the win, and I think like the I think that was the hard part about the fight was the power or the the, the man strength is is probably what's the right thing to say is I probably yeah. didn't have my full man strength at that point. Um, and my bones were probably not as developed as yours and stuff like that. So I was getting really hurt with shots that probably now would still hurt you, you powerful pop fighter, but maybe it would have took a little bit. It wouldn't hurt as much now. Cause I feel like I've got a lot stronger, and yeah. a lot bigger now. Um, I, I definitely wouldn't be making 53 and a half again anyway. So that's out the window. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think, it was definitely the man strength thing was I, I felt it in the, in the ring, um, especially in like, like sitting round five and stuff. I was, I was feeling, I was feeling really hurt, but yeah, that, that was one of the, that was one of the hard things about the fight. And yeah, just, just kind of trying to keep focused. When, when you, I think it was round five as well. You were like, like you said, you're trying to drag me into this fight and you were like waving me on. Yeah. yeah Cause me. obviously again, I, I, knew, I knew I wouldn't be able to, to get it like that. I knew I'd have to, you know, have a big round, like, you know, drop you or, or whatever, really, and, and I knew I wasn't going to win like that. I'd have to try to get you into a fight, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, walk all the brawl with him. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, it was an amazing fight, and, and it, and it's weird because for you, it might, it was probably not, not such a big deal, because it was just something you'd done. It was, you'd done it for years, and you'd probably had big fights to get to that stage. Um, yeah, yeah. Whereas this, this was like my big opportunity. And, I, I'm, you said you watched it three times, mate. That's got a few thousand views on on YouTube, and I, I think I'm probably <laughs> half of them views, mate, because I watch it so much. <laughs> it makes it just makes me really proud. I, I, I was proud how how the fight went, obviously the decision, but I was proud of how like how I managed to stick in there, and I, and I was proud to fight someone like you because you you were a legend in the sport. So um, yeah, but that's like you know that's so it should be because obviously again really, uh, you know I remember being like you. You know what I mean? Like your age, and obviously maybe just a little bit older because I didn't really start until I was 18, but I was quite new and and starting to fight the big names and obviously beating them big names and thinking, fuck, you know, I remember watching that Giz and like, I wanted to be like him. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm fighting them people and I'm beating them. And then obviously it's such a big achievement. You know, it's it's a great yeah. thing, man. It's, it's weird as well because, like I said, I've watched, it, I've watched it so many times and I, it feels like it was yesterday to me, but like thinking about it, it was six years ago and I'm, it doesn't feel nowhere near that long ago. And, um, but yeah, it was what, what an amazing, uh, it, feels, it feels for me. I'm fucking a 40 years old, mate. I'm <laughs> 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 well, I feel 40. Fucking hell. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it, like, like I said, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience for me. And, um, one of my biggest achievements, I, I've went on to achieve like some big things. I fought some like Thai champions and I've won and I'm on a really good uh, win streak now, but, yeah. um, but What's up with the injuries and stuff like that? You fully fixed? So I was I was supposed to be, and then coronavirus come and my surgery got put back because the hospitals won't allow me to. I've, I've just had to be honest. I've had a nightmare with it. I've had I've been like past the pillar to post kind of thing, and that hmm. nobody's none of these surgeons ever gave me a, a proper answer. So I I went I went to one of the top surgeons in London, and that was after a year and a half because I thought this is not right. Like I'm I'm having big problems with my hands still and yeah. it should be like that um so i went to a really good like i pay, i just i forked out and went to a like real good good guy and and he sorted it straight away he knew exactly what it was he'd done some more scans and um yeah i was i was gonna get surgery from him and and then I, yeah all this coronavirus come about so it's um it put that back but i'll be i'll be back i think ho hopefully if i get a surgery as soon as i get the surgery i think it's a few months rehab and then I'm ready to go and I want to carry on from where I left off really. I want to fight. I just want to fight the best still and yeah. just keep, keep going. I want to be on these big stages cause I'm, I love it, man. I love it. And I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm addicted Good to opportunities now. You know, it's big things out there, like the one championships and stuff like that. <laughs> That's it. It's, you it's, know, they need, to, they need to start signing up the younger lot rather than the older lot. You know what I mean? It's, That's it. It's, it's, um, with, with it's it's annoying for me, but this this is what's frustrating is because that all come about. That's really started to take off, and I'd beaten like Rung Narai, who was current champion in Lumpini, Rajadam Nguyen, and Thailand champion. He's went on to like win Fighter of the Year, like the year after in Thailand. Then I I beat another former champion like the fight after about six weeks later in 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 the stadiums in Thailand. Then I've went to Thailand a few times since, and but th one championship come about like and started really growing as my hands started like playing up. 
So mm. um, there, there's talks of me kind of getting, like, I think that is going to be a thing that I'll be involved in. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just annoying that I, I kind of didn't get that opportunity to show my skills. That's what I needed if I was an old man, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, oh, mate, with them little gloves on, you'd be smashing people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the plan, man. After injuries, I just want to get back to it and, and keep yeah. fighting the best. Definitely, man. Definitely. What about you? What, what's your plans? You, you kind of, did I see you were going to come back for a fight? I don't know, really. I've retired, obviously, I've retired properly in 2015. Um, at, at, at my show in, in Korea, I stopped there. And then I got offered a fight in Japan in 2018. And then I thought, oh, fuck it, why not? I ain't got nothing else to do. So I went, obviously, I was fighting another old bloke like myself, really. Yeah. We lasted was, that his retirement? was it his retirement fight as well? That? I was before that. So in 2018, I went there, we fought, uh, I knocked him out in the third round. And then since then, they kept asking for a rematch because apparently he had some shoulder injury or something like that. Not taking away from him, but they kept asking for a rematch. Mm. And um, anyway, cut long, cutting long story short, I, I said, yeah, trained again for another like two months or whatever, or a month for it or whatever. Just trained for the fight, went over, went back out then. You know, luckily I knocked him out again on the first round. Nice. But that was it, really. But now I've been training a lot. I keep joking about saying I would like to have another fight before I'm full. I'm, I'm full in September. Wow. So I don't know. Sometimes I would like to have another one. But to be mm. honest, if I would fight again, you'll have to be someone at a similar stage as myself. Yeah. It's, it's, it's only, you know, you have to be realistic, really. I'm, you know, I'm full in September, so I can't be fighting 20 year olds or 21 year olds. It's just your, your thing's different, man. Like the timing, you know, the, the, the mentality. I remember being that age. So. I don't know, sometimes I'd like to have one more, just as a fun thing, not as a proper thing, you know what I mean? Just because just you love it kind of thing. Yeah, just because I love it, and they just bored them, innit? They just get a bit <laughs> bored. I'll have a fight, really. I'm, to be honest, I train every day like I used to, really. Nothing's changed for me, apart from being retired and training the lads and doing the shows. Yeah. Training-wise, for me, I still train every day. I'm, I run every other day. It's, it's the only thing I've known since I was 18 years old, so he ain't going to change and I'm one of them people who actually loves training I, I train more probably than some of the fighters in the gym really it just, <laughs> it's built in me man it's just who I am I can't yes I can't change it. obviously I have to be I have to be clever with the you know with the fighting side of it I'm not you know I'm not as young as I used to be even if I think I am sometimes so I don't know if if something comes up that I would like to do and obviously is the right thing and someone obviously similar stage as myself and this it's a good offer, really. I'm not even talking about money wise, so I don't really give a fuck about that. But if it's something I'd like to do, I'd just do it, really. Nice. Yeah, I, you know what? The way you're speaking, I feel like you're going to do it. I, just, I, have, I, can, <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. I, I don't know if the missus will let me, really. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, like, what, it, what is it like being retired? Because a lot of people just can't let go. And is it, I, I don't know whether it's because there's so much attention on the, when we're fighting, it's, no matter what, no matter what anyone says, we're show offs. We love showing off our skills and we love entertaining. Mm. And um, is it is it that the, is that the thing that you kind of miss, or what is it that you think you miss? Because you you still train like you fight in any way, so that isn't the thing. That you, you, you know, you know what I miss. I, I think I miss. You know that. You know when you're really really fit and you're banging them pads, and it's like a week or two. Like I was better probably two weeks before the fight. A week before the fight, I just get pissed off because I just wanted to fight. But you know when you're banging them pads and you feel like like Superman, yeah. you know what I mean? You fit, you bang in them pads and you fit and you, you are buzzing, man. It's like you're like you floating about, you know what I mean? It's, I think I miss that buzz. That's why I think I train so much and I bang them pads because um, you ask the lads, man, I bang the pads from round one with 100% power as much as I can and I try to go as hard as I can for five rounds. It's, yeah. I think I miss that. I think that's why I always try to get that buzz even when I'm on the pads now. Yeah. I think more than like the, you know, don't get me wrong, obviously I miss the buzz of winning. Obviously you miss the buzz of being, entertaining people like you said and being the thing. But what, you know, what I really love is, is that training, that fitness. Yeah. I don't know if I'm coming across well, but like, you know, when you're super fit, you're banging them pads and you think, mate, I could take on anyone. Yeah. No, no, you that, that's it. That's yeah, and that belief, then you have that mentality. You put Mike Tyson in front of me and I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I'm having a fight, you know what I mean? That type <laughs> thing. So I miss yeah. that. You like you that, feel you it. feel invincible when you you feel so invincible. It's weird. I, I know exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and you just know when you're feeling good, and you know when 
well, yeah, I, I get it. I get that. And I think, I think that is something I'd probably miss as well, 100%. I mean, even having the time out of the injury, I still train most days. I, I can't punch, so there's certain things I can't do. But yeah, it, it's the same thing. When you haven't got that the fight to focus, when you haven't got a fight to focus on, it's, it's at the moment I'm banging pads and I, I feel good, like really good, like still, and I feel fit and I'm, I'm in good shape. But there's that when you've got a fight fight kind of to look forward to you really like there's more there's just extra energy you know, it's a different mentality you just it's almost like someone just flicks a switch and you go boom that's it this is what yeah. i'm doing and you know you sacrifice whatever to get you know to get to it so i think every fighter misses that and i think that's why so many fighters really you know come back so many times retire come back you know like john wayne powers he must have retired about 10 times that gives him and he's he's cracking on he's got to be what mid 40s it's 45, I think. It's around that. So, yeah. it, it's a, it, it, yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to be a dangerous thing with the one championships fighting some of them young machines. But that's that's what I was thinking. Like he, I mean, I, mean, I watched a documentary of his. He had a boxing fight, and um, his his hips, he, his hips, he couldn't even run for the fight in that because his hips yeah. were He needed hip replacements. They were talking about. I'm pretty sure. And then he was said, "This this is the last fight. I can't do it anymore because my my body just can't keep up." And then I saw that he'd signed to one. And, and mate, have you saw that the division is crazy? That division is. Yeah, and I, I'm, again, I'm not I'm not dissing no one. You know what I mean? Fair play to him if he wants to do it. And obviously, full respect and good luck to him. Yeah. Hope it as well. But it's going to be really tough. You have to be realistic. You know, you if you like forty odd, it's it's tough against them young guns, man. And some of them, the machines as well. You know, the big lads for the weight. You know, like when you get to a certain a certain age, cutting weight, you ain't as easy. You know, if you need to cut weight or whatever, you have to fight heavier and then so on. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's one other thing, really. That's up to them. Really good luck to them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, you know what I mean? It's, it's tough, like, you know, like, you know, even like Andy, really, you know, it's, it's still tough. He was out for a long time. Obviously, he went there, you know, for the young lad and unfortunately come out and stuck. But, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it is tough, really. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a hard sport, man. And yeah, I, I'm hoping by the time I'm, I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. Anyway, even though I'm young, I've been I've been fighting pro since I was 15. So, um, I'm hoping by the time I get to like, I'm saying this now, but it might change. But I'm hoping by the time I'm like mid 30s, I, I would have, I, I would have had my glory days, and and I could leave it behind and and kind of move on. Saying that now is probably different to saying it then and when it gets yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's hard, really. To be honest, like, I think one of the things that pushed me really to retire as well, because, you know, obviously I, I was married, obviously we, we were going to have a kid, Mrs. was pregnant, really. And I think, in a way, really, she was pushing me a little bit to, you know, to stop, really. You know, I was, what was I? I was 35, kid coming, so. I think I think that swayed me a little bit to stop. If I didn't have that, probably I think I would have still be like scrapping now, really. Yeah. You know, if, I, so, if I'm honest. But. So you telling me that just stay single and stay single, man. Listen, don't get misses. <laughs> just stay single and have fun and just carry on. <laughs> uh, Paolo, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot for coming on. Um, and like I said, like, massive respect for you. you. Always have and um. Even more so now. But yeah, thanks for coming on. I think everyone will really enjoy that. So nice. I'm no, it's no problem at all, man. Listen, just keep doing what you're doing and good luck for the future. Hope the injuries get better. And that's it, really. Cheers, that's man. Hope, around, man. Hopefully see you soon as well. No problem at all. Take it easy, mate. Ooh, see you, man. Out.